Welcome to EDC Journeys. If you enjoyed the video, give me a thumbs up and consider subscribing. Enjoy! What's going on EDC people? And what's our journey today? Well, we're doing kind of a, a quick part two of episode one, the Phantom 440C. Uh, I, I said I would discuss more things about blade edge, or uh, I'm sorry, blade shape and geometry and because of the length of the sharpening video i ended up not dis discussing that so i'm going to do that briefly right now and then move on to a different video for the day uh this was the knife that we discussed yesterday the ganzo g738 in 440c you saw me swipe it on a brick 10 times dull it to the point where it wasn't able to even cut paper remotely and then you watched for an hour, even though that was highly edited, because it, I, I went on and on. I have a tendency, to, uh, I have the gift, the gift of gab, I guess. Uh, I found myself, you know, in the middle of a stone, uh, you know, while while on a stone, halfway through working on it, when I was pretty much had nothing left to say about the blade or the sharpening process. Right then, I would, I found myself talking about the most random stuff. A lot of stuff I had to edit out because it was just totally on nothing to do with knives. Uh, at one point, I was discussing the fight with Mike Tyson and Roy Jones Jr. It, it was ridiculous. Anyways, uh, the Ganzo 738, 440C. Great for sharpening. It's great all around steel. Uh, it's It's got a lot of mis uh, misunderstanding, really, because... People feel that because it's in the budget category and it can be bought at a budget price, this knife that cost me, I believe, $19 plus shipping and tax, maybe, say, say less than $25, okay? Um, with the G-Lock, so it can, you know, ha kind of has the, you know, because the patent was up on the access lock from Benchmade, um, all these companies are allowed to use this lock system now, basically, essentially, even though people found ways around it before anyways by just making it a little different but my point is you can get a decent uh 440c pocket knife uh full you know folding knife for a great price and people feel that 440c therefore must be just junk it's not it used to be a sought after steel guys there are different 400 category steels that are not so great you know 400a is a different story we're not talking about that we're talking about 440c right now so make sure you're looking at 440c if we're talking about this particular you know when 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 looking for this particular i am very sorry about that i usually put my phone on airplane mode or do not disturb but i got a phone call so i do not know where it cut off just uh, I was trying to specify make sure we're talking about four or you're looking at 440c when you are looking at this uh, episode you know that's that's the steel specifically we're talking about okay so it takes a great edge you can take it up to a pretty high grid if you'd like I didn't I brought it up to about mm, 1200 maybe uh, on that hard Washita stone uh, it's hard to grade that I, I would say it's at least that grit though it's a, it's a very sharp blade now. It definitely looks and is sharper than it was when it came to the factory. Um, it may not be perfect, perfectly lined bevels, you know, perfectly um, uh, shaped on each side. I might, you know, maybe it is though. It kind of looks pretty good. But that's not what I was looking for. I just wanted to make my 440C, my $25 knife work again, cut again, my tool. I wanted it to go from completely dull from a brick to at least the way it was and I did and it's better and if I wasn't filming and gabbing it would have been a much faster sharpening process okay so that's why it gets a solid three clovers on my on my rating scale of uh, ease of sharpening that is something to take into consideration when you're buying a knife ease of sharpening if you if you don't know how to if you're not a decent sharpener or you've never sharpened before this knife is not broken in yet that's why it doesn't swing down perfectly yet uh you know you need to take sharpening into consideration because if you're going to actually use your knife you're going to have to sharpen it 
that's just a fact or you're gonna have to pay someone to do it that's the way it is or it's a it's a temporary tool however way you want to look at it but if you use your knife it's gonna go dull so it's either temporary you're gonna pay someone else to sharpen it or you gotta learn to sharpen and if you're gonna do that I highly recommend 440c it is a high grade steel it is meant for wear resistance I mean, I'm sorry, corrosion resistance and decent, decent edge retention. Toughness uh, is another story, but because the steel is, is, is softer than some of the super seals, you're less likely to chip. You, you might get uh, some apex damage that you can fix up with sharpening, but you're less likely to chip. Okay, now, blade shape and geometry. This is a drop point blade. A drop point blade as far as I know, is basically defined as it slopes on the spine from, from the t uh, heel, I guess, to the tip, okay? And it swoops up here. This is a drop point blade. It has many uses, okay? The, it, you know, butchering tasks such as cutting, skinning, carving, um, this blade is great for Typically because- Typically thicker especially at the tip you know and i'm comparing this to say let's you know a classic way to compare and i have one right here if i can pull it out of my little display without ruining it there we go is a clip point now this is a small clip point but that is where you see them the most is just general pocket knives we're gonna get there but anyways let's compare it to the clip point you know you the clip point is the, the you know the forward one third of the blade it looks like got clipped off that's why it's called a clip point and there's a use for that shape too we'll get to that in another episode this the drop point though is typically thicker at the spine especially at the tip now it's hard to compare these two because this is the size difference and so there's no point in me holding them side by side and showing you i could show you something more like um well that's kind of that's kind of a fair example. You see how these two drop points, look how thick, the one on the right is even thicker, but they, they're they thick right up until that tip, and then it has a kind of a reinforcement there. The benefit over something like a clip point is a clip point, I, I don't, I want to talk about it more when we get to a clip point episode, but a clip point, you, well, let's put it this way, the drop point compared to the clip point, you have less of a chance of puncturing things like a hide or a gut sack or anything else that is unintended to be cut. Um, if you have a, you know, in a, the, a concave, let me show you, oh, here's an elementum drop point, right? It's a little shorter, so I can show you a little easier. You can put your finger, it, with that thick spine, you can use your index finger to do some precision cutting you can also use your index finger as a depth stop. You know, I know that uh, some people may not like the idea of, of game hunting or whatever, but you need to know what you're doing and, and how far you're going into something. And, and a lot of times, once you get comfortable with your knife, especially a drop point, you can put your index finger out and, and know, you know, where, how, how deep your blade is in something. Um, before uh, before it's too late because you do not want to puncture certain things it's just a more uh, versatile uh, blade shape than than a than a clip point um the upswept tip at the end kind of gives a longer you know get overall gives you a longer uh, let me try to point it out here oh here's the upswept the upset swept tip gives you longer blade cutting blade meaning if it were straight i don't happen to have a, oh what do we what do you know yes i do a warm cliff great blade has a purpose we'll talk about it in another episode but it's straight you're gonna get that that blade length is that cutting length this blade length is not the same as the cutting length because there's more here do you understand it's just geometry now 
as for the 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 this specific knife's blade geometry it's it's a it's a straight grind it's not a hollow grind um it has this kind of inward top where, where the flat would be i'm not you know I, I don't have a ton of experience with this particular blade as far as you know gaming and or skinning or hunting but you're, you would rather use a drop point blade to do those kinds of things uh, disjointing all of that than a clip point because the clip point is much more of a puncturing knife okay and again there's a lot more to a clip point we're gonna get to it but I don't want to ruin that episode okay so that's the deal with the with drop points and they're very popular I think they're in the I think if you googled it I think it says they're in the top three even maybe the top two it could be the top one uh, blade shape that there is um, I think it compares I'm not sure what it compares with maybe maybe a clip point and I'm not sure a worn clip maybe I don't know but I know it's in the top three a drop point has got to be in the top three okay so that is the addition to episode one 440c sharpening uh, the the phantom 440c I guess <laughs> um, my camera is seeing emperor palpatine's face and trying to focus on it i keep getting a yellow circle over around his head um what else can i tell you got my brother 1601 which is the man xxl lookalike got the uh tactical elite tactical yeah elite tactical with the recurve, the only reason I haven't gotten into this yet further, as far as reviewing it, I've been using it, but as far as reviewing it's concerned, wow, it drops like a dream, huh? I mean, it just goes right down. Um, it's because it's a recurve, and, uh, and I'm not saying that to scare people away from recurves, because you know what? Recurves have a huge, great, great, purpose again i don't want to ruin other episodes so I, uh, i'll explain it but a lot of people will be able to 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 sharpen recurves when they're done with seeing that episode and you're gonna you're not gonna be afraid of them anymore and then when you don't have the fear of how to sharpen a recurve the benefit of the recurve is so good so great that you'll understand why knife companies still to this day put them out even though they sell less because people are afraid of them and they're afraid of them for sharpening reasons all right now i'm going off topic this is about 440c three three star uh, nope three clovers uh i think it's a great steal especially in the budget category you know is it a great steal in the premium category no is it a high-end category no but as a budget, you can't go wrong at this price point with 440C. Depends on the depends on the maker. It depends on a lot of things. You can't just save the price off the steel. You know, it depends a lot. There's a whole lot to do with it. But no matter what the steel is, you know, I mean, the knife is, the maker of the knife or anything else, if it's 440C, there is going to be a limitation on how much you can charge because it's such a readily available steel. And there's so much of it out there. Okay, guys? But as far as resharpening goes as far as corrosion resistance goes edge retention check out the de uh, description of this video i have stuff information from outpost 76 um, i believe super steel steve might have been involved in it uh it's te it's you know the, it cut 101 feet of cardboard between the fine edge what they call the fine edge and the working edge um a total of 101 feet from sharp to dull uh you know, so depending on what you're doing in your day, 101 feet of cardboard is, is quite a bit. Just saying. And since it's so easy to drop right back up, if I if you have one of those like pen uh, sharpeners, you could, I'm doing this backwards for a reason, by the way. You know, like the Victorinox sells that pen, you can and get some more footage out of it. 440C is not a bad steal, guys. Don't run away from it. There's other steals in the budget category, far worse. We'll get to those. This is part two of episode one. The Phantom 440C. We'll see you in the next episode, guys. Have a great day. 
Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed, please give me a thumbs up. And for more content like this, consider subscribing. And then hit that notification bell so you don't miss anything.